Hey, this is Latif Mikado, and you're listening to the Good Night Freestyle Podcast, where I take some time each night to try and reflect on the freestyle scene, where it is, where it's going, and try to figure out how to sustain it, not just for future generations to enjoy, but also to benefit. So sit back, relax, and let's talk some freestyle. Hey, what's up, everyone? It's Latif, and welcome to the Good Night Freestyle Podcast, and this is episode 62. Yes, it is Monday night, and a uh, pretty busy day today, actually. Uh, a lot of calls came in, a lot of messages. Um, uh, it's looking good. I think we're going to have a pretty good summer. Uh, thank God. Um, anyway, uh, because it's still... Early in the in the year, we're just approaching. We're just getting into our uh, March, which is cool. Um, a lot of acts, uh, especially in the freestyle genre, they're pretty cool with, you know, with at least a, uh, at a minimum uh, a month, uh, a show a month, and that's pretty. Believe it or not, depending on who the act is, uh, that could be a pretty significant sum of dough for for them. For you know, I'm talking about the A-list acts. So that's not bad. When they're doing more than that, it's pretty significant. That's why when people tell me, "Oh yeah, it's freestyle. You guys are still hanging on. You know, you know, performing for uh, for breadcrumbs and all this crap," they honestly don't know what the hell they're talking about. And the ones who do talk like that, those are usually people who are making the breadcrumbs if they're part of the industry in any way, or they, um, or maybe it was their dream and that dream never was never fulfilled. So, you know, of course, the whole sour grapes start to kick in. It doesn't matter to me. They know the deal, you know. So, I mean, for anybody who's, you know, interested in the genre, I got to tell you, man, it's still pretty lucrative. And there's so much, so much more potential. I mean, sometimes I sit around and I think about how big this thing can actually get today. And it really amazes me. Um, you know, we have so much, we have so much, so much ground to cover. You know, um, just it's all about just uh, being innovative, creative, consistent, you know, uh, that creativity is so important. You know, you look at some of the, the one of the, the big um, uh, complaints by probably even fans is it's the same damn show everywhere. And it's true. It is. It's the same show. But you see, this is the deal. The artists themselves do not have to change what they're doing. The promoters can. The promoters can come up with different ideas and try to get creative. Create a a set. uh, Create a lighting. You know, uh, make other things available, you know, for the artists. So that way they can, you know, if you want to produce a show. Producing a show isn't just setting up the mics and putting up the lights and so on. Producing a show is, you know, is seeing how you can take the artists that are going to perform and put them in a very unique um, setting. You know, what can you do? You know, what, try to be creative. When we did, I remember um, one time we did, uh, it was, I forgot what it was called. Oh, it was called the Freestyle Beach Party. Okay. And it was me and Ovidio Santiago from uh, Florida. We came up with the idea, and uh, we we actually had sand, lots of sand, delivered to the stage. Okay, so the stage was covered with sand. Um, we had um, a tiki bar. It was a tiki bar that stood in the center stage, but towards the back. So when the artists entered the stage, they actually walked from behind stage through the tiki bar, and they came out of the tiki bar into the stage. It was really, really, really dope. Then we had like two or three beach balls, like those really big beach balls, and we just threw them in the audience, and the audience kept those things bouncing like throughout the whole night. So it was really dope. And the other requirement was the artists must wear bathing suits, and they did. (laughs) So you see what I'm saying? I mean... You know, taking just that one idea, you know, but it was the same performance. It was the same 
the same performance as they do with clothes on <laughs> they did in bathing suits. So uh, the only ones that stick out is, of course, Angel and Coral. I remember Coral coming up with a bathing suit and his dancers had bathing suits and then Angel had um, a bathing suit on, really cool, like she had with the polka dots and stuff, black with the polka dot jack. I forgot how it looked. And she had a, like a flower in her ear. It was really dope. She almost looked like 60s. And we had this makeup artist that came and gave her with the bright red lipstick. And really dope. Really dope. So, and those are the kind of things that can be done. So if you're a promoter and you're trying to get into freestyle, you know, that's what I'm trying to say. There's like so much shit that has never been done before. You know, it just... You know, look at movies, look at other shows, look at plays, and, and then try to get creative. This is what people, uh, this is, doing stuff like this can have people attending every single one of your events. You know, now if you're just throwing the acts up on stage, I mean, what are you doing, really? You're, you're, not, you're not producing a show, I'm sorry. You're not producing a show. You're throwing the act on the stage, we can do that anywhere. We can do that in a uh, second grade auditorium. So you're not doing anything special. Um, and then you promote in the marketing too. And even that's kind of limited for a lot of you. A lot of the promoters, it's very limited. There's a handful that put money into ads. There's a handful that pay for radio or billboards or whatever the case may be. There's others that just want to do post, share the post on everybody's page, which is annoying as hell, um, or ask other people to share. You know, asking people to share posts is cool. I do it. Um, but relying on that to promote your event, yeah. You're not only... Are you gonna take a hit? Not only are you gonna take a hit, man, it's gonna it's not gonna look good for the genre. It's gonna make it look weak, you know. So this is why I tell a lot of the, the artists too to you know speak up, you know, share some of your ideas, you know, uh, see what you can do. Uh, not too many artists are gonna go and change their routine. That's not gonna happen that often, and it, and it it doesn't have to, and it it might even be safe if it doesn't change. That way, you're not worried about. If the artist keeps with their routine and they keep with the same songs that they always do, then you, they're practiced, they're seasoned because they've done the show so many times, you know? So, you know, now all you have to do is work around them. That's it. Work around them, come up with something creative. I, I talked to you guys before when I did the Freestyle Music Awards, okay? Um, I changed the show, though, only because I asked the acts because I wanted this to be uh, sh uh, performance. This award is, would be for the artist by the artist. So I didn't want the artist going up there with uh, and singing their hits. We didn't. We were wanted to find like their favorite album cut. Maybe there was a song within the album or something else that they did that they would have liked to have performed. And we could then at this point see the real artists in these in these people, you know. And then you know, change your outfits, you know. Let's see what would you do if you had, you know. When we do these big concerts like the Super Freestyle Explosion or the Freestyle Fest or the History of Freestyle or the Freestyle Extravaganza or um, any of these shows, one of the requirements are only sing the hits. This is what the promoters tell. They tell me as an agent and I have to relay the message. Do not sing anything outside the hits. So they and, and they want you to, they, they need to know how long your show is. So whether your show is 12 minutes, 17 minutes, 25 minutes, 34 minutes, whatever. They want to know because they have to fit. And if it's too long, they're going to tell you to shorten it. If it's too short, they're going to see if you can bring it up. You know, So uh, probably a standard is around anywhere between 15 and, and 20 minutes. That's to round it off. You know, uh, Other than that, it'll be more like 12 minutes to 18 minutes. So that's a little more standard, believe it or not. So... Um, but when we did the Freestyle Music Awards, again, you know, I put people on stage singing stuff that they never sing. Susie sang, I Still Love You in Spanish. She didn't sing, wishing, uh, um, 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 she didn't sing uh, Take Me In Your Arms. Angel didn't sing Show Me. She sung, um, or sang, sung, sang. She sang, uh, Don't Tell Me Till, till Tomorrow. Um, so, uh, yeah. So, you know, so this is why I'm, I'm trying to get through to people. I'm trying to get people to try to be innovative, try to come up with some new concepts and, and work around the performances that are already there. You already saw the idea I had with the beach party. Um, I gave you multiple examples of some of the other podcasts as how I did it with the Freestyle Music Awards. So what can you come up with? What can you do 
that might be different. You understand? You see how much freedom there is, you know? <clears throat> because it's not like anyone can say, oh, I would do this, but it was already done. No one's done anything. It's always been the same. It's just the same, oh, if anything, people might put a backdrop. Okay, what we do? Or somebody might put a band behind us. Okay, what we do? We've done that, been there. That's nothing, nothing special. But what else can we do to make it a little more exciting? What kind of themes can we add to make it a little more exciting, you know? And if you can figure this out, uh, you can really, really change the game. And not only will you change the game, you will raise the bar. And you will get other people to want to feel that they also have to step to the plate, you know? So we won't, so we'll un, you'll end up uh, creating this, um, like this ripple effect of new productions that come in. Now, this is what's going to work for our genre, you know? Um, and the thing is, people can't be scared to do it. They can't be scared to do it, you know? And I think once it gets, once people get hold of it, um, I think it, it'll become something exciting, especially now. I mean, people are too concerned that, you know, well, the freestyle artists are getting older. Yeah, they're getting older. Everybody's getting older, but they're not old. They still got plenty of time. Listen, Stevie B's already in his 60s, and he's rocking the house. So Shannon. They're rocking the house. We got no excuses. I'm serious. So... For the majority of the artists, we still got a solid 10 years. So let's rock the 10 years. And trust me, Stevie and Shannon are not going anywhere. So I can see them doing another 20 years. Easy. I'm, I'm dead serious. I can see these acts all performing easily. Full performance into their 80s. That's what it's looking like now. Remember, it's not like it was back in the days. Back in the days, 35, you're dead. 50 years old, you're basically elderly. By 60, your grandma in a week in a, in a in a rocking chair. That's not the case anymore. Grandmas are some of the sexiest ones out there these days, you know. Grandpas are getting buck, you know. <clears throat> um, so, you know, so the world is changing. The world is changing. You know, I will say, uh, 50s is the new 35. For real, I'm I'm dead serious. Uh, look at people like J Lo, you know. You see, you know, people say, oh, well, they get work. Okay, whatever. But you know what? If she's doing getting work, then everybody who wants to look like her, you better go get some work too. Okay? Because um, her and quite a few, man, quite a few others that are really, you know, looking incredible. Yeah, and people say, oh, yeah, but they got the money. Okay. Okay, that's a good excuse. That's a good excuse. But a lot of them are just working out. A lot of them are eating right and they're hitting the gym and they're just, it just, and, and, and it's not everybody. It's not every actor or every artist that looks good. Some are overweight, some are underweight, <laughs> you know, so it's not everybody. It's just those determined individuals, whether they're actors, singers, dancers, whatever the case may be, teachers, police officers, whatever the case may be, you know. People who are into a solid workout routine are going to go out there. They're going to do their thing and they're going to look good. So, you know, so I, I hate when people come to us and say, yeah, that we're getting old. Yeah, I saw you. You know how many fans hit us up, like, especially on YouTube. Meanwhile, they don't even have a profile picture. Oh, yeah, yeah. Look at look at look at Angel. She, she's she got old. Yeah, I'm sure you got old, too. I got old. The audience got old. Everybody's getting old. But she still looks good as hell, <laughs> you know, and that goes on for a lot. Of acts. Uh, yesterday actually was little Susie's birthday. 41 years old. Happy birthday, little Susie. And and, you know, you guys know I've been working with her since she was five years old. So so, you know, you think about it, man. You, if, if little Susie is old, if she's 41 years old, if you, if you think that's old and you're mad old, okay? So, but you know, but, but you know, it, it's, it's crazy. You know, we can't, we have to take this out of the head, you know, especially the artists, even the artists, a lot of the artists, you know, don't play it down like you're old already, you know? So what, the hair turns a little gray, it turns a little white, the beard, whatever the case may be. I mean, most of us don't even have wrinkles yet. You know, or that's all we have. The extent is maybe a little gray, you know, but supposedly that looks good. But 
but you know we still have the energy and the stamina to go the distance and do what we can and, and if anything we've been doing so many shows that a lot of these artists actually have been getting better year after year have been getting better some of the acts that I see on the stage like this last few shows that I've done between the Fresno and last weekend you know this weekend that passed in Texas and weekend before in Fresno I look at some of these acts and trust me I've been booking a lot of these acts for you know well over 20 years and I remember them. I remember booking them back in, in you know, in the early 90s. And I remember going to their shows. And some of them, I remember kind of squirming a little bit when they when they performed or when they sang. And I was like, oof, it was kind of rough, you know. But then I look at them now, and I'm like, oh, shit. Actually kind of dope. You know, I listen to them. I see how they connect with the audience. I see how they dress. I'm pretty proud. I'm pretty proud of our genre. I'm pretty proud of our artists. You know, I think we got something big here. I think we got. I think we got it going on. I, I really do. And I think most of not, most most of us are not going to realize how dope we got it until we don't have it anymore. When we're old and we're sitting back and we start to reminisce, and I want you guys to all remember this: when we're all we're all reminiscing. Okay, about back in the days, we're going to have regrets. We're going to think, wow, I wish I would have been on the road more. I wish I would have stayed on the road a few extra days. These are things that I might regret. Some of you have little ones. A lot of our artists don't really have too many little ones. I actually have my grandkids, my granddaughter in particular, who, who lives with us. So, you know, we can't really stay that, that long on the road. We have to come right back unless we take her with us, you know, which we do sometimes. But, um... But yeah, so you know it's it's you know it's crazy, it's crazy, and um, I just think you know I still think there's so much more life, you know, even if it was only ten years, and it's gonna be more than ten years, even if it is only ten years, we have the opportunity to make it the best ten years as ever, best ten years ever, and then we also have the ability to inspire new artists to look at what we're doing and then come in and want to do it not just do it again do it themselves but also do it better take it to a whole other level this is what i'm excited about this is what i'm waiting to see this is what i keep trying to tell people um you know uh, i get a few artists that reach out to me sometimes you got to be patient uh trying to get in touch with me if you're messaging me or whatever uh um, but I am open, you know, just kind of stay a little persistent. Those who have, uh, actually I have a few people that reached out to me last week, uh, but I was getting ready to leave. Uh, but if you want to reach out to me this week, do so. I will be in the office probably for the next two weeks. I think we're going to be home. A uh, few shows coming up. Um, we have some more um, South Cal- uh, Southern California. I'm not going to mention where or, or the day yet because I'm not in contract. I also got a Chicago that I got a call on. Again, can't say anything. Got a couple private parties. Those are looking really good. Connecticut called me and I got a Miami that looks like we want to and back to Texas. Back to Texas. So the girls did so good this weekend that I got a call back on it. You know, um, but actually, I think the callback for Texas might just be Angel by herself. So we'll see. We'll see. I always try to push a, a cover girl show, but sometimes they like to alternate between cover girls and, and Angel by herself. Not just because they save a few dollars, uh, just to kind of change the show up a little bit because it's a different show. Same songs, kind of different delivery. So if you haven't seen the Angel CG show, you guys might want to uh, check that one out, you know? Uh, other than that, um, that's pretty much it. Just, um, just gonna, gonna, gonna go, uh, call it a night. Watch, maybe, watch, I've been wanting to, uh, been, actually, I started watching that, um, Gabriel Fernandez, uh, trial. Oh my God. Poor baby. I'll tell you. Um, if you guys haven't seen it, you might want to check it, check it, you know, check it out. Um, yeah, it's, it's not, it's a little rough to, to watch. It's a little tough. Um, poor kid went through quite a bit and at first I didn't want to watch it. Then I thought about it. I'm like, well, you know what? If this stuff happened to me, if something like this happened to me, 
I would want the world to know about it. I would want the world to see this. I would not want the world to say, well, you know what? I don't want to see that because it's, you know, it's going to make me have nightmares or it's going to make me sad or it's going to get me depressed. You know, um, I wouldn't want people to say that. So I made it my point, you know, for the kid, for Gabriel, uh, to watch this show and sit there and feel for him, pray for him, and, you know, and, uh, oh, my God. And th- you're talking of oh, my God. I don't want to break it for you guys, but um, you need to check it out. It's on Netflix, okay, and it's called The Trial of Gabriel Fernandez, I believe. Something like that. You'll, you'll see it because it's, it's, it's highlighted right now. Um, but anyway... <laughs> That's it for tonight, guys. Um, I will talk to you tomorrow. I appreciate you listening in. So until tomorrow, good night, Freestyle. Before I lay me down to sleep, I pray to hear a freestyle beat. For if I die before I wake, I hope to make it to the break.